This video will show you how you can determine the cardiorespiratory fitness of an individual by performing a lab test and using specialized equipment to measure the gas exchange across the lungs. Before you start watching this video, I recommend you to watch the YouTube videos entitled Why Measuring VO2max and the one that is called VO2max Measured with the Jaeger Oxycon Pro. These videos were made for this course in 2017 by Birk Fjell, but unfortunately they are only available in Norwegian. They are, however, useful to watch, also for non-Norwegian speakers. You can find the links in the description below. This video about the VO2 Max practical shows you how to prepare and perform a VO2 Max test. There are many different protocols that you can use and you first have to find out what works best for the population that you plan to test. We aim for a test that gradually increases in intensity and that does not last too long or too short. Ideally, a view to max test should last somewhere between 8 and 12 minutes. The exercise mode is also important to think about. Here we use cycling as the exercise mode due to practicalities. This is an excellent choice if you test cyclists, but for a more general population, a running test on a treadmill would have been better. In our lab, we use a Jaeger Oxygen Pro to do the ergo spirometry measurements. Before we can actually start our VO2 max test, we need to prepare the equipment. The Jaeger equipment has to be switched on at least 30 minutes before the measurement and we need to perform a calibration of the system. The calibration consists of three different parts. The first is the measurement of the ambient conditions of the lab. The second is a volume calibration and the third is a calibration of the oxygen and carbon dioxide cells. These three parts can all be done more or less automatically by the system. First, we measure the ambient conditions of the lab. In other words, we need information about the temperature, the humidity and the pressure in the room. This is needed because we are measuring gas volumes and you might recall from your physiology class that the volume of a gas is affected by pressure, temperature and humidity. In order to compare the results that we get in this lab and on this day with the results elsewhere, or in general under different conditions, we have to convert our local results to standard conditions. And for that we need to know the temperature, humidity and pressure of our test condition. Although the equipment measures these automatically, we usually double check with a separate barometer in the lab. Secondly, we need to calibrate the volume sensor. The volume sensor measures the amount of air that is going in and out of the lungs, as well as how many times we breathe in and out. This is done with a large syringe of exactly 3 liters. By repeatedly pumping this 3 liters of air in and out of the system, the equipment can calibrate the volume sensor. Thirdly, the oxygen and carbon dioxide cells need to be calibrated. We do this with a so-called two-point calibration. That means that the equipment switches between ambient air and the gas mixture of a gas bottle containing a precisely known mixture of gas. The gas mixture of the gas bottle that we use here contains 15% of oxygen and 5% of carbon dioxide. And this is substantially different from the air that we breathe, which we know contains around 21% of oxygen and only around 0.05% of carbon dioxide. To calibrate the cells, we select the program for gas calibration and open the gas bottle. The small tube that you see here samples the air in the room. Care should be taken so that sampling can occur without obstruction. The calibration process itself is done automatically after hitting the start button in the upper left corner. 
The protocol switches multiple times between the two gas mixtures before it finally adjusts to the correct values. When calibration of the equipment is done, we prepare the setup of the test. A tube brings the exhaled air from the participant to the Jaeger equipment. The tube connects with a mixing chamber that is positioned on top of the equipment. The mixing chamber mixes the air over several breads. The air samples that are taken at the back of the mixing chamber collect therefore a sample that is average over several breads. At the back of the mixing chamber, we also find the volume sensor that measures the amount of air that is exhaled and the number of exhalations per time. Finally, we have to prepare the mouthpiece. The mouthpiece consists of seven pieces that need to be set together in a specific order. By doing so, air can only go in one direction through the mouthpiece. This one-way flow is created by two valves that let the air pass in only one direction. One valve defines where air comes in and one valve defines where air can go out. You have to be careful that the valves are in the right place and in the right direction in order to prevent incorrect airflow and create invalid measurements. So always double check the valves, which can be easily done by using your fingers. Here you can see the complete mouthpiece set together. The white bottom part is where the air comes in when the air is inhaled by the participant, whereas the air that is exhaled can only go out in an upward direction due to the second valve that is placed in the transparent part of the mouthpiece. The whole mouthpiece is then coupled to the tube that connects to the Jaeger equipment. Of course it is important to connect the correct side of the mouthpiece to the tube. Luckily, they thought of this issue by making the inflow side white and the outflow side transparent. So it is the transparent part that needs to be connected to the tube, because it is the exhaled air that needs to pass through the mixing chamber. All the previous preparations are preferably done before the participant gets to the lab. When the participant arrives, we do the final preparations for the warm-up and the actual test. After informing our participants about the procedures, we measure height and weight as these are used by the program to calculate normalized VO2 values. Height and weight are always measured in the lab to minimize measurement errors. The height is measured with a stadiometer for more accuracy. The weight is measured while wearing just some light training clothes and typically without shoes so not exactly as is shown here. The cycle ergometer is adjusted so that the participant can cycle most optimally. Seat height and position and height and reach of the handlebars are adjusted according to the standards and the preference of the participant. A correct cycle position is especially of importance when the intensity gets harder and the participant is asked to give all he or she has to give. When this is done, we let the participant do some warm-up cycling to get familiar with the bike and to prime the aerobic energy systems. The warm-up period consists of low-intensity cycling and typically lasts around 10 minutes. During the warm-up phase, we inform our participant once more about the procedure. Because the mount piece will be in during the whole test, we explain how we can communicate during the test. At regular intervals, the test leader will ask the participant if all is fine and the participant can answer with a thumb signal, thumbs up, thumbs down or anything in between. This is also a good time to fill in the participant information in the software of the Jaeger system. Name, identification, date of birth, gender, height and weight are required. When the warm-up period is over, we give the participant the opportunity to drink and connect the heart rate sensor to be able to monitor heart rate during the test. The test is started by choosing the program for mixing chamber from the main screen. From there, a window pops up for a last check of all settings and when everything is correct, we can continue to the main window to start the test. 
The participant tries out the mouthpiece and gets a nose clip as well to secure that all exhaled air during the test will go through the mixing chamber. When everything is ready to start and mouthpiece and nose clip are connected, we start data collection and tell the participant to start cycling. The test is started at low intensity and gradually increases with increments of 25 watts per minute. We explain again that communication can be done with a thumb signal. Thumbs up means all ok, thumbs down means not ok. It is then the task of the test leader to figure out what is going on. For overview over both the participant and the development of the test, the Jaeger system is placed in a position where the test leader can see both the participant as well as the screen, as both will give information on how the test is going and when we can expect the termination of the test. During the test, we inform the participants on a regular basis about when we are going to increase the intensity and give information about heart rate, oxygen consumption and RER. RER stands for the Respiratory Exchange Ratio, or in short, the R value, and refers to the ratio between the carbon dioxide that is produced and the oxygen that is consumed. During a max test, it gives us a useful indication of where we are in the test and helps us to predict an upcoming termination of the test. As intensity increases, ventilation goes up and at high intensities it increases disproportional in relation to oxygen uptake. Exhalation of carbon dioxide exceeds the intake of oxygen and this is reflected in an R value that exceeds 1. Since we want to get our participant to give all she has in order to truly reach her maximum value for oxygen uptake, and since giving all she has is not necessarily a pleasant feeling, we have to motivate our participant as best as we can. So the more we reach the end, the more encouragement we give in order to get her to fulfill yet another stage. The test is terminated when the participant is exhausted. Typically for cycling is that it is no longer possible to keep the cycle cadence above 60 rounds per minute. When cycle cadence gets below 60, we end the test and tell the participant to stop. We decrease the resistance as fast as possible and instruct the participant to keep cycling at low intensity. The mouthpiece can be taken out and we prepare for taking a blood lactate sample and the rating of perceived exertion. Blood lactate concentration is measured after the test is terminated. It is measured by means of collecting a small blood sample from the fingertip. As little as only 5 microliter is required. Blood lactate concentration is one of the criteria that can tell us whether this test is successful in measuring the maximum oxygen consumption for this participant. Another criteria is RPE, or the rating of perceived exertion also often called the Borg scale. After the test, we asked the participant to rate the perceived exertion of the test by presenting a 6 till 20 scale of how hard the test was perceived. We use these additional measurements to decide whether we can call the highest VO2 that was obtained truly VO2 max or not. Other criteria to define this are based on the highest heart rate and RER values during the test and whether there was a visible plateau in the VO2 values despite a further increase in intensity. After the test, we detach the mouthpiece from the tube and the tube and the volume sensor from the mixing chamber. Using gloves, we take the mouthpiece apart and rinse all seven parts with water before they are immersed in a disinfection solution for 10 minutes. After disinfection, all parts are thoroughly rinsed with water and then dried on paper.